Welcome to week two of the summer anime season. Um, I haven't looked at too many shows so far, but I have a fair few that I'm planning to look at. The timing just hasn't lined up. Um, to the Abandoned Sacred Beasts, um, the Erotic Literature Club, um, and a couple others. Uh, Grand Beam, I want to check that out too, just because the director um, was the one who did the one from Emoto, Sai Irabai. I like that show. Nobody else seems to like that show for some reason. I thought it was pretty charming. Um, but today we're looking at Arforetta, you know, from commonplace to world's strongest. Um, it's an anime based on a manga, based on a light novel about a group of a class of high schoolers who get teleported into another world. So classic isekai. And it's made by White Fox Studios, who seem to now have moved into just purely making uh, isekai shows. And they in the past, they've made other stuff. Um, they made Steins Gate Zero. They're also re responsible for the first Steins Gate, which was made in 2011. Um, if you don't feel old now, I don't know what you're doing. Um, but other than that, these days they're just making like ReZero, Death March to Another World, just all kinds of weird uh, 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 isekai shows. So this is another one in, the, in that vein. Um, and from what I've seen, the manga and light novel have gotten pretty good reception everywhere. It's pretty popular. That's why it's being made into an anime now. Um, I don't really know anything other than that, so without further ado, let's get started. And for some reason, we're starting off in this exact same art style and level that we saw in Grimgar of Fantasy and Ash towards the end of it. Um, and they're making a play on the old uh, Monty Python and the Holy Grail bunny trope. Um... Okay, I mean, I can't say it's a promising start. The um, the main character looks almost exactly like the main character from Death March to Another World. Um, it, it, is it just like paint by the numbers? Do they just copy paste every single main character? Because it doesn't really matter what they look like. I know that light novel pro protagonist is kind of like a like self insert type meme right now, but you know they could have given him like a different hair color at least to and you know pretend to try. But right, let's keep going. With that, I forgot to mention another anime that this studio has made, which is um, Goblin Slayer. I don't know if you noticed, but kind of, there's a similar theme going on here, specifically that, just like in Goblin Slayer, which I can't say I watched the whole show Goblin Slayer, I only watched episode one, so my uh, judgment might be completely biased by that. But from what I've seen in episode one, it has a similar problem with this, namely that before even explaining what happened, we just are we just are supposed to assume that all the usual like isekai tropes happened and he like stepped in front of a bus or whatever happened and he teleported to this other world before even telling us how this world works or why he's in this dungeon or anything like that we just randomly get thrown into like edgy shock value action scenes which is basically how goblin slayer started to um and he's just oh it's just pray for a predator like that's how the natural world works um, nothing really too shocking about that. It would be more shocking if it didn't eat that. And for some reason, it throws energy claws from its hands, even though it already has claws. Uh, whatever. Let's keep watching. And that whole color palette is just completely weird, like entirely dark. I had to turn up the brightness on my monitor to 100 and I still can't see anything. Okay, let's keep going. This has to be a comedy. Like... He's watching a bear eat his arm, and the only thing you can think of it to say is, it ate my arm. Like, wouldn't you be screaming or running away or, like, trying to hold it for to prevent blood loss or something? This is basically, I mean, the music is so, like, tense and, like, atmospheric and, like, trying to tell you that something really bad is going to happen, and he's just like, it ate my arm. <laughs> this is comedy, right? What is that thing that Gigax says? I'm being attacked by bad CG. Yeah, okay. I mean, I don't have anything against CG. Pretty much every show that I've looked at this this entire year has some element of CG in it. I think it's just unavoidable in this day and age, the amount of effort that it saves by doing CG instead of 2D animation, especially if you're doing action scenes or something that requires a lot of camera movement, which requires like tricky perspective changes. I get why they use CG, but like, this is just really bad. The skeletons look like stock. It just looks horrible. Um, it really just looks like stock footage. I mean, like stock animation or stock 3D assets. Um, let's keep watching. I mean, we already know the action. I mean, maybe the action will just blow my socks off. I don't know. Let's keep watching. Uh, 
uh, uh, I mean, the action scene is horrible. I mean, this that's not even the problem with this. The whole action scene, no one's even, like, swung a sword yet. They've only done weird magic, which we haven't even been told how it works. But that's, like, 45th on the list of problems so far. Um, first of all, we don't know who any of the characters are. The only thing we know anything about in this entire show is that they've been teleported to another world. Um, have we come so far in the isekai trope world that now we just skip the entire origin story? Is it like with superheroes now, if you make an origin story movie, people are like, really? Another origin story movie? Can't we just skip to the action? And then in this case, it's like, really, another isekai? Let's just cut to the chase. Like, we already know what happened. Something weird happened. The whole class teleported out here. But I don't know who this meld captain guy is. Like, is it this? Is this anime made exclusively for people who've already read the light novel or read the manga? It, don't we need some introduction as anime-only viewers? Um, not to mention this particular shot of these bricks building up is maybe the ugliest thing I've seen all year. Um, this is streaming on Funimation and Hulu, as far as I know. Um, and they, th their selection of anime this season seems kind of uh, sketchy, to say the least. I mean, the season itself is not the strongest season ever. Um, that being said, I don't know why you'd pick this up other than maybe the manga was super popular so they thought the anime would be good. Um, isekai anime seem to be like extremely hit or miss at the moment and by hit or miss I mean like every one out of ten hits and the other nine are just complete flops. Um, I actually liked a few of the isekai anime that people don't like like Grimgar of Fantasy and Ash I thought it was actually pretty good. Um, a lot of the other ones, ReZero, I did not like, so, but at least those had like a coherent, comprehensible storyline, whereas this, we've just jumped into an action scene with absolutely no context, but we actually, you know, first saw an even edgier action scene, and then cut to an explanation about a crystal, and then went back in time to show us all the characters who we were still never not introduced to, and then put into a different dungeon on a different day. We've been cutting back and forth so much that I don't even know what's happening right now. And we're being shown an action scene with characters um, who we have no connection to. So there's no stakes whatsoever. Okay, let's keep watching. Nah. I don't know what you were going for with those lines, but you definitely didn't pull it off, Mr. Voice Actor Guy. Um, I can't even find the name of the voice actor for this character. I think this is since this is Nagumo, whose reference picture in the, in the Annie chart is something completely different. I think it's Toshinari Fukumachi. I don't know, but um, that was not your best work. I'll just say that much. Okay, continuing. So far, the cheese is the only redeeming thing about this entire show. The female character designs seem to be pretty good. That's the only thing positive I can say about this. Um, okay, let's keep going. We're halfway into this episode, and we learn now that there are job classes that you have to do to go into the dungeon. Um, and we've been shown the dungeon a few a few times now, and the only thing we've sh been shown is like the floor number of which floor they're on, um, which is not really useful in knowing what it is or why they're going into it. They seem to be in some fancy place now, so that maybe they're commissioned to go into it. Again, we should really be told these things. This reminds me of like the beginning episode of like the show Tower of Draga, where there's a similar like um, labyrinth with a certain number of floors, and you have to clear it, and you be then you become a legendary hero. Um, but that show was funny and like good, and this show is not the first one for sure. Okay, let's keep going. Wasn't he terrified like five seconds ago? Um, did they show us anything about his character that would lead us to believe that he could is capable of this? Um, I don't really know if the direction is to blame or like the the original, at you know like the original work that it's adapted from is to blame for the kind of weird back and forthness that makes no sense in this episode. Um, the director also directed Seven Sins way back in the day, and like did the storyboard for a bunch of more. Uh, known anime as well as like key animation for like other stuff so he's been around for a while like it can't be his fault right i mean if, if you'd think that by now he would know that if you just throw a bunch of moving pictures at, at an audience 
with no semblance of explanation of what's happening that is generally a bad idea um is it because like the manga had to start off with a bang in order to capture an audience so we're thrust into an action scene with no context whatsoever and uh, horribly done action scene too it, it's not like it was impressive technically or anything like that um let's see what his transformation leads to oh god oh jesus i don't know what they were going for in this um I'm just going to pause on this for a second, just because, oh my god, that's some pretty bad art right there. Um, okay, that's all I wanted to say. I mean, I'm completely machine gunning this show, but at the end, maybe we can pull together some semblance of what we expected and what we ended up getting. I was going ham on this voice actor before, but that scream was actually not bad in terms of like, Screams of despair in the midst of a like cave while you just ate a monster and you lost an arm That wasn't bad as far as screams go Maybe we can hire him as like an outside scream consultant and he only comes in and screams and then leaves I could see him uh, being very successful with that Wait what he said like seven paragraphs of blabber and then we ended up with him making guns where did the metal for the gun come? I guess he can just do whatever he wants. Um, this was all just a contrived uh, plot explanation for us to have guns and a Tokyo Ghoul-esque main character in a fantasy world. Okay, fine. Okay, show if that's what you want to do. I'm fine with that. Let's go along for the ride. This is almost done anyway. Also, we've cut to like this weird free jazz. That's come out of nowhere. So far we've had, in this episode alone, we've had weird classical big band music at the very beginning to signify some kind of like psychological terror. In between we had this like synthwave music, which is super weird and completely out of place. And now we're in the typical like action scene jazz cuts. Um, oh my god, I'm getting whiplash in so many different dimensions. Oh my god, okay. Well, I only watched this because it was towards the top of the popularity charts. I'm assuming because the manga is better than this. Or it could be that it's completely different than the anime adaptation is a complete letdown. I mean, that's possible. Um, the character designs, I'm assuming, were taken from the manga. Um, the art itself, like the actual like animation, wasn't horrible. The CG was really bad. And like there's that weird Goblin Slayer like darkness filter they put over everything so you can't even see um i don't see the point in doing that because in the scenes where the, he wasn't in the cave it was bright and it was like oh i can finally see what i'm looking at and i was like why can't the whole show just be like this um first of all this episode one as far as episode ones go is so incoherent as any kind of like plot device we didn't find out anything about the characters at all we don't know why there's a class he vaguely mentioned that there's a class i have to help my class my classmates betrayed me something like that the only reason i know any of this is because i read like the introduction do you need to read that is this some kind of like abstract anime which doesn't really have any kind of plot structure and it's just there to like throw images at your face to like remove you from the concept of narrative and just make you as uncomfortable as possible because if it is it's working really well and i'd have no idea what's going on okay that being said have we gotten so bored with isekai that we now need to introduce like so many twists to the isekai formula that it basically doesn't matter that it's an isekai anymore because the whole point of isekai at the beginning was that we were supposed to be like uh, this weird thrownness like fish out of water syndrome and then we have to find a way to like work with the new world's rules to like be the best or whatever like whatever contrived plot excuse we have for being in a new world and like whatever we have to do isn't that the reason why isekai exists in the first place and also is like an escapist fantasy of oh hey you know even if i do just live in modern day japan and i'm a whatever salary worker at a convenience store or a loser in a tracksuit or whatever it is there's still a possibility that i can be a hero in another world or whatever isn't that the point of isekai um, but now we've gotten so far, let's just look at all the different like boondoggles that are attached to the isekai vehicle that is this show. Um, so first of all, it's an isekai. So there's a whole 
going to another world segment. Second of all, we now have like a whole party of people. It's not enough that only one person goes into another world. Like a whole set of people go into another world, which is kind of what we saw in Shield Hero too. Like it wasn't just him. It was like four people and all of them were heroes in the new world. Now, granted, I only watched like 10 episodes of Shield Hero, but that I was convinced in those 10 episodes that it didn't really have that much to offer. That's why I ended up dropping it. Um, in this show, he goes into another world with his whole class, but he, he never escapes what he wanted to escape from in the first place because all the problems that he had in the old world are still there because they, he still gets bullied, treated like he's useless, and the job class that he has is completely not useful for combat at all. So he ends up just being a like, useless like tool person on the side who just helped them escape on a bridge or whatever. I'm not really sure what happened in that, in that sense. Um, they were on a bridge. He fell. I'm assuming they escaped. Is that the big point of conflict that he has with his class? They seem to not treat him very well. So that point of Isekai is completely uh, gone. Then he eats a monster's flesh and gets superpowers. And I'm like, if, if that was the case, wouldn't more people do that? It feels like it's really easy. You just need to run out of food in a dungeon. And then you end up eating a monster and you become a Tokyo Ghoul-esque, white-haired, eye-patched um, superhero guy who can make guns out of rocks is what he said he did. Um, okay, uh, it feels like there should be more of you running around if that was the case. Um, okay, I'll swallow this chosen one scenario. Uh, but why? And for some reason, he always eats the meat without cutting the fur off of it first. Like, no one does that. Like, you have to cut the fur off. I get in that one combat sequence where he's fighting the weird bear with the claws that he eats it with the fur on. But in the other sequence, like, do you just enjoy the taste of hair in your mouth? That was confusing. Um, there are like five or six girl characters who just randomly show up. Um, this anime was just somewhat painful to watch. I mean, Goblin Slayer is pretty much as bad as this. I wouldn't say this is worse or that was worse. That's worse because it was going for pure shock value. I mean, this we got a little bit of shock value. But, you know, at least it went for something. I'm not trying to stand up for Goblin Slayer. I could give a shit about Goblin Slayer. Um... I don't know why this anime really exists other than to capitalize on the popularity of the manga and it's been entrusted to what's become the studio for isekais, White Fox. Uh, you know, they used to do good stuff back in the day. Now they're just, I don't know what they're doing anymore. Um, it's okay, I don't really want to give this anime the time of day to like take over my entire like what has anime come to type thing because I know there are better shows than this. Like. With the proliferation of studios, we've now come to the point where everybody has to do something to stand out. So we're just doing tropes on top of tropes on top of tropes. And it helps if you have an original work that already has those tropes in it. So you don't have to think of new ones. Like this is Isekai plus high school plus um, weird chosen one superhero plus guns. It just a whole mishmash of aesthetic. It's like pastiche gone wrong. Um don't really have much more to say than that. Probably won't be watching the next week of this. That's probably guaranteed. There are many other shows to watch. Um, to the Abandoned Sacred Beast was pretty good. I saw episode one of that. Going to be watching episode two of that. And then doing like a first impressions. Because I can't really put up a reaction as fast as I'd like to. A um, few other shows. Uh, follow my Twitter if you want to see what else I'll be watching this season. Um, that's it for this episode. Thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. All that good stuff. And I'll see you next time.